to the second session of uh, Alexa Community India. I hope you are all safe and with your family amidst the pandemic. We truly appreciate your presence. So let's quickly uh, quick start. But before that, I have uh, some exciting news to all the attendees. We are conducting an interesting giveaway for this particular session. And here is an opportunity that you do not want to miss. Send us your name and email ID in the form, form URL mentioned on the screen, and the team would pick a lucky winner. Good luck. Well, now we shall set ourselves to the main segment of the event. We have with us Justin Jeffress, Senior Solution Architect, Amazon, to talk on Alexa Conversation and demonstrate uh, how to build Alexa Conversation skills. Justin serves developers building voice-enabled applications as an evangelist and mentor. Over to you, Justin. Hi, yes, thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's an honor to be here and, uh, you know, thank you for your interest in Alexa Conversations. Um, yes, so um, since, you know, she did such a wonderful job introducing me, I'm going to get right to the material um, and we'll go from there. So, um, yes. Um, so at uh, Alexa Live, which took place on uh, July 22nd, uh, we announced uh, that uh, Alexa Conversations was uh, available for public beta. And we are also running at this time uh, a hackathon. And I'll talk about that in just a moment in more detail. Um, and so um, I'm going to cover today um, a, um, a skill that we created to help uh, learn how to use Alexa Conversations. Um, and so I'll be sharing out uh, the links to get started and um, you know talk about what the skill is. And then I'll talk about the hackathon. Um, and we'll go through what Alexa Conversations is and how it helps you build multi-turn um, conversational skills. And uh, you know the two major goals of Alexa Conversations is that uh, your users end up being able to speak in a more natural way and you as a developer have to write less code in order to be able to do that. So um, those are the two major uh, things you get for using Alexa Conversations in your skills. And uh, one thing I want to point out is currently uh, Alexa Conversations is only available um, for skills in the uh, EN US region. However, um, you know, if you're, um, you know, uh, you know, I'm speaking to the um, Alexa community, uh, India, um, uh, community here. So, um, you know, you can um, publish a skill in the US store and uh, you can use Lex Conversations there. And the great thing about doing this now is you'll get a head start for whenever it comes to your region. So, um, you know, again, I'm not announcing anything. I'm not saying anything about our roadmap or anything, but, you know, um, you know that's one of the nice things about, um, you know, you, know, you can do the same thing with uh, other features that aren't out in your region. You can publish skills in the US store and, and learn those things in advance. So um, uh, let's get to it. So um, there is a companion like tutorial. Um, so if you go to alexa.design slash AC tutorial, that'll take you to uh, this nice web page that we put together that is modular and you can study at your own pace. Uh, entering that link takes you to this page. And so I'm going to be going through um, and talking about um, some of the voice design challenges. Um, we'll talk about uh, the core fundamentals of Alexa Conversations. And then, um, you know, we don't have enough time to go through each module today and build each uh, one of these pieces step by step. So then what I'm going to do is once I talk about, um, you know, creating um, a skill using Alexa Conversations, then I'm going to start uh, you know, doing a walkthrough of the pet match skill. So you'll have to understand how all the things that we talk about at a conceptual level work together. So um, that's how we're going to go through today. Um, so um, our example uh, is rooted in a skill called pet match. And um, we originally created pet match uh, back in 2017 to uh, demonstrate a best of class multi-turn interaction skill with uh, dialogue management, which is uh, another uh, tool that you can use to help facilitate multi-turn interactional skills. Um, and 
uh, when Alex Conversations was uh, originally being, um, you know, kicked around internally, um, one of the things that I wanted to do was, you know, do a comparison between the two. And um, what we were able to do was um, build a, um, uh, with the same amount of effort, I was able to build an even more uh, uh, better, more natural um, interaction without writing as much code. And um, so that was one of the cool things that we were able to do. And, um, you know, we were able to easily handle user corrections and provide answers to follow up questions like, you know, um, say after the, the match was over, uh, the recommendation, okay, so let me keep, take a step back, pet match recommends uh, dogs based upon, um, you know, some search criteria, and that search criteria is given via a back and forth conversation. And um, with the dialogue management version of pet match, the one that's not using Lex conversations, as soon as the uh, recommendation is given, the skill exits and you lose that uh, context. And so if you were to ask a follow up question like, what is that? I, I want to know more about the dog that you recommended to me. Um, what happens is you as a developer have to write some code that keeps that context, what that match was. Uh, and then um, you would then have to, you know, when that request comes, go, oh, okay, here's the, the recommendation that we've given. Here's the information about that recommendation. Whereas with Alexa Conversations, uh, it is tracking that conversational context for you. And so what you do is you create these uh, sample dialogues that represent a task that your user wants to complete. Uh, and that task is a, um, and the way how they complete that task is via a multi-turn conversation. And so once that conversation has uh, been um, completed, if you wanted to model, um, you know, asking for more information, you add another line of dialogue. And then once you do that, um, what happens is um, when the user says, you know, oh, well, what is that? Um, you know, then you'll have what's called an API that backs that, gets that information and returns it. And uh, you use a response template to have Alexa speak the results back. So uh, that is uh, what the skill does. And that's one of the things that Alexa Conversations enabled us to do really easily. Um, so now I want to take a step back and you know, talk about the, the hackathon. So if you go to alexaconversations.devpost.com, and you can see the link is uh, displayed on your screen here as well as on the slide. Um, and this is where you'll sign up for the hackathon. And uh, just so you're all aware, there's 16 days until the submission deadline, which is September 14th. Um, and the time is like there's a uh, it's there's a I think it's like 4 p.m. Eastern time, which is the final uh, submission deadline, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. So I don't know how to convert uh, Eastern time into IST, um, but it's uh, 5 p.m. on September 14th. Um, and so this is um, the uh, uh, hackathon page. And you know it goes through and it talks about all the different things and all the information that you need to know about the hackathon. Uh, there's $101,000 in prizes, which is awesome. Um, and there's a bunch of different categories. And so I suggest going through here and taking a look at all the different categories and figuring out, you know, what kind of skill that you want to create. And when you submit, you know, um, you know you'll want to, um, you know, provide your skill ID um, for your skill that you've created. And um, you can see here, you must submit your skill for the skill store by September 14th and pass certification by the 30th. So you do have a little bit of time, um, you know, to go back and forth between, because, um, you know, when you submit your skill for certification, there's a, uh, it's very rare that you get your skill, um, like certified and passed on the first attempt. So what I would suggest doing is submit your skill before September 14th, just so you get some more leeway because um, there are, while there are automated processes that are used for um, uh, you know, certifying your skill, there is a manual process too. And the more skills that are being submitted all at once, the uh, longer it takes for the certification team to go through and get things um, certified. And so um, you know, one way to get, make sure your skill gets published is to publish it sooner rather than later, because 
you'll avoid that rush of everyone trying to submit their skill at the last minute. So um, yes. And then also I wanted to point out that there is this nice little tab here for resources. And we have a lot of great uh, uh, resources prepared for you. So um, some of the links that I'm sharing throughout today are listed here, as well as this really cool Slack channel. Um, so um, if you're not a part of the Slack channel, you should definitely join. We have a link uh, showing on the screen right now. Um, if you go to that link, you'll be able to join the Slack channel. And we've got, I've got it up here. Um, we've got a bunch of different channels here. We've got our technical questions. Um, we have an AMA for Ask Me Anything every Wednesday at um, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time. I do not know that time in IST. So hopefully somebody uh, in the comments um, can help uh, with the translating these times. Um, but uh, we have um, the AMA. So if you have any questions um, that you uh, want to get answered, we'll be in there real time answering your questions during that hour. Uh, and then we also have, you know, um, some other sections here for like Python related questions and, um, you know, an area for looking for teams. So I would highly recommend that you join this uh, Slack group um, because there's lots of people here, um, you know, all enthusiastic about building with Alexa conversations, competing in the hackathon. Um, and it's a great place to get your questions answered. So um, yes, we also have the contest office hours schedule here. Um, click on that that takes you to this page here um, and this has all of the different things that we are um, providing for you for for content and all of this stuff has been um, you know like you'll notice we've got stuff from uh, August 4th and um, you know uh, August 18th right so these are things that already happened in the past uh, but we do have links if you click on these it'll take you to uh, the archived video on demand. And so you can go watch them. So, um, you know, I know we're, we're nearing the end of August here and you can see we're right here, <laughs> uh, the India, India community event. So, um, yes. So I would suggest, you know, bookmarking this page and tuning in. And again, if you've missed some of our live content, it's there for you to view on demand. Um, okay. Uh, just also want to point out, here's our countdown timer. I know it says 16 days, but, uh, you know, here's the actual, uh, minutes that you have left. Um, so about, you know, 15 days, 18 hours. All right. Um, let's see, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about these, uh, later as we get to them in the course. Okay, great. So with all of the, you know, housekeeping items out of the way, let's continue on. Uh, and get to the meat of the presentation. So, um, oh yes, also one other thing. Um, we have our Alexa Conversations office hours. Uh, those take place every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific uh, Standard, or, yeah, Pacific time uh, on twitch.tv slash Amazon Alexa. Um, so, um, yeah, and you know, when you uh, tune in, you know, you bring your uh, Alexa Conversations questions um, and I'll do my best to answer them on air. Uh, we also have people in the chat uh, who are, um, you know, experts who are also helping out as well during the office hours. Um, you can also, you know, chat with your fellow Alexa skill builders and find potentially find someone that you can collaborate with, which is awesome. So I would highly recommend uh, you tune into those office hours. Um, I know it's 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. I'm not exactly sure what that time is. Um, in your time zone. Um, so, you know, again, please, those of you who know, uh, or who can do that quick uh, conversion in your head, uh, share that um, in the in the comments. So, all right, great. So uh, I'm going to go through the voice design challenges now. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, building the skill using Alexa conversations, we'll cover the, the build time components, and then I'll start uh, uh, tearing down the pet match skill. So let's do it. So um, one of the things I really like about Alexa conversations is it focuses you on conversational design because for each task that you want to have your skill, um, complete on behalf of the user, uh, you create a sample dialogue and we call these sample dialogues, uh, like your golden dialogue or, uh, a happy path. And it's because it represents, uh, the case where everything goes 
correctly, you know, the way that you expect the, hand, the conversation to pan out. Uh, and then when you click build, Alexa Conversations goes through and analyzes that conversation and inflates your model uh, with all of the ways that the conversation could deviate from uh, your happy path. And so what's great about this is you get this AI assist uh, to make your model uh, way better. Because when you build a skill with an interaction model, um, you as a developer are the one who is responsible for uh, trying to predict ahead of time how the conversation could deviate from all of the different, uh, you know, from what you originally planned out. And so your model is only as good as you foresaw the conversation panning out. And so um, with Alexa Conversations, it's using, um, you know, AI and a set of rules to figure out how all of that uh, comes together. And, um, you know, I didn't provide a link to this, um, but uh, I just remembered um, that we did a video just the other day. I, I think it might be linked, hopefully, on here. Uh, yes, here we go. Um, on that page with the schedule, um, there is a, uh, an Alexa and Friends, Alexa Conversation Under the Hood. Um, this is a great reference. Uh, I would definitely, I suggest you, you know, bookmark this video and uh, watch it after this, um, because in this video, um, Jeff Blankenberg and myself uh, speak with um, Charlie and Kavindra, who worked on the um, Alexa Conversations. So Charlie worked on uh, the part that does the model expansion. So when you click that build button and it um, simulates the conversation and uh, adds all the ways that the conversation could deviate. Uh, so he worked on that and then Kavindra worked on the runtime part of Alexa Conversations. So what happens when the user is interacting with your skill and um, they talk about, uh, you know, what's happening under the hood at a, at a lower level. So I would highly recommend that you uh, view this video um, sometime after today because uh, it will really help your understanding of what Alexa Conversations is doing for you. So um, switching back over to uh, the pet match example here. So we have this uh, conversation that represents what it is that we're trying to do. And you can see we've uh, grouped everything up into uh, turns. So we have the user says something and Alexa responds. And so in this case, you know, we would call this a, um, a linear multi-turn interaction. And, you know, it seems pretty simple, but, um, you know, it's actually surprisingly complex when you uh, deviate from this uh, happy path. And so typically the way how uh, an interaction that takes place between uh, the user and your skill uh, is uh, something a bit more like this, where, uh, you know, uh, these dots represent uh, like some sort of state of the conversation and the arrow is the place where you're intending the user should go. And the navy blue numbered lines uh, represent the actual path that they took. So you can kind of see that it kind of went a little random here and, you know, um, sort of branched off and went to different places. And eventually they got to their goal, um, but the path that they took wasn't linear. And so uh, to do this without Alexa conversations, there's a lot of uh, burden that you have to take as a developer. So you have to build out your model and then you have to have some back end code that keeps track of all of that state and you know handles all the different corrections and selects so conversations uh, takes on the burden of inflating your model for, at build time and then at runtime it keeps track of that conversational context. So if you change, um, so say in the middle of pet match someone says like, hey, you know what kind of dog is that or what size dog is that or actually you know what I want a smaller dog rather than a larger dog after they've you know given their their original uh, uh, preference. Um, you know, trying to do all of that yourself uh, with Alex, uh, without Alexa Conversations, there's more work that you have to do. Um, whereas with Alexa Conversations, you get all of that correction for free, which is awesome. So um, now I'm going to talk about uh, the core of Alexa Conversations. Uh, I'm going to go through each of the build time components. And then once we do that, uh, we will go through um, a teardown of the skill. Um, Great. So what is Alexa Conversations? Uh, Alexa Conversations is, um, you know, I've alluded to this before, but it's a uh, AI driven dialogue manager. So 
Uh, we do have dialogue management, which is uh, a separate uh, tool, but that is not AI driven. Um, what uh, the way how dialogue management works is every uh, turn of interaction, your skills endpoint receives a request and your backend has to return a dialogue.delegate directive in order for it to continue working. Whereas with um, the way how Alex Conversations works is your skills endpoint will receive a request only when uh, Alexa Conversations um, has determined that it's time to call your API backend. And the way how it determines that is if all of the required slots that you need for that particular API have been collected. And so one thing that I want to point out is, uh, you know, earlier I said, you know, the way how Alexa Conversations works is you have a task that you want to complete and um, you have a sample dialogue that has that, um, that's going to represent that API call. So you'll have the different steps where each turn you're collecting slots and then you have an API call that you're gonna call. Um, but uh, one thing that um, you, you don't, um, you're not limited to only one API call per sample dialogue. You can actually have multiple uh, API calls throughout, uh, but and typically you have one main API that you're trying to fulfill, but there might be sub API calls that you need to call along the way. Um, so just wanted to point that out that you're not limited to just one API per uh, sample dialogue. Um, and so uh, Alexa Conversations, as I mentioned before, it simulates and predicts how the customer is going to deviate from your happy path uh, and helps with your uh, model. Uh, it keeps track of that conversational context. Uh, it determines how to respond to customer input. So you create a set of um, response templates and at runtime, it will dynamically figure out which uh, template to use to respond. Um, it handles the uh, like sequence of inputs um, in any order. So uh, if the user says something like, you know, you create your happy path and it has a, um, a flow, but if the user says something out of turn, um, you know, it will gracefully handle that. So you don't have to worry about, oh, they didn't follow uh, the conversation exactly how I planned it out. Um, and it handles context carryover. And so, um, you know, which is really great. Uh, one of the, the tricky things about using dialogue management, which is, um, you know, predates Alex conversations, if that's where you have one intent that has lots of slots and you specify uh, which slots are required and it'll go through and collect all the slots until they are um, all collected. And if you say any utterance that triggers a different intent, uh, Alex, uh, not Alex conversations, the interaction model will, uh, you know, send a request to your skills backend and your skill will then send a response back. And then if the user says something that goes back to the context of these um, intent with dialogue management, uh, if you don't keep track of that context yourself, the skill will have amnesia and it will forget and it will start over uh, from the very beginning of that dialogue management uh, state. And so there's a little bit more work that you have to do in order to keep that context. Whereas with Alexa Conversations, since it's tracking the conversational context for you, you don't have to do that. You get that for free. And so what we do in the pet match skill is we um, show you, um, well, first of all, you get that out of the box when you um, ask for, when you go through and you get the recommendation, you can then say, you know what, say you asked for a, uh, a large family dog that's low energy and you decide, you know what, actually I want a medium sized dog. You can say after you get the um, match, you know what, make that a medium size. And what it'll do is it'll, um, without any extra like work on your end. You don't have to write any code to do this or change your model. It will automatically recall the API to get the recommendation and speak the results back. And what we do in the uh, tutorial that I shared out earlier, um, we have you, uh, you know, go through and do a little extra work to have the skill provide some context. So that way the skill returns a, a little bit more contextual message that says, oh, okay, so after changing uh, large to medium, I recommend A, and then we update, uh, you know, the uh, recommendation with the new one. So um, you can do that with very, very, very minimal amount of work. In fact, you don't even have to touch your backend code in that case. You only have to change uh, your model. And um, so 
I'll, I'll talk about that today when I start deep diving through the skill. Um, and then uh, another thing that Alex Conversations does for you is it uh, you know tracks the required uh, inputs that you need in order to perform a task. And those inputs are slots, which is if you've created a skill before, you should already be familiar with them. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit more in detail about each of the components on the next slide. Um, and then uh, Alex Conversations delivers a JSON request to perform the task. And so for those of you who haven't done anything with Alex Conversations yet, um, I, I'm, um, I know when I was learning about Alex Conversations for the first time, I was like, ooh, how is this going to work? Like, how, how is the back end? Is it the same? Is it different? Um, and so you might be asking yourself, like, oh, yeah, you know, this is a whole different thing. It's doing all this stuff for me. Like, what do I need to do on my, on, for my code? So, you know, it follows the same type of uh, call and response uh, API like your um, uh, interaction model uh, does, except for the one different thing is instead of getting a launch request or an intent request, you get a, um, uh, an API, a dialogue.api.invoked request. And I see Karthik is coming on. So I think Karthik is going to uh, cut me off here for questions. I have two more things. I think this is a great place to break. Let me just say two things, and then uh, we'll we'll move over to to the Q and A part. So, um, so yeah. Once uh, so, then what you'll do is you can have the exact same type of uh, you can use the the Node.js or one of our SDKs to uh, build the skill, and you have your handler. And instead of looking for a launch request, you just look for dialog.api.invoked. Um, and then uh, your skill returns a JSON response back. And then Alexa Conversations takes that response and figures out which template to use. And uh, that's how it renders the response back. So um, with that, um, I'll let uh, Karthik open it up. Hey, Justin. Um, so yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for getting up so early. I know it's pretty <laughs> early in there and answering all our questions. Uh, so this is the first time I'm learning more about Alexa Conversations as well. Uh, but at the same time, I have a question from the audience, which is uh, this question is from Ashish Jha. And Ashish Jha asks, is Alexa Conversations an overkill when you just want to collect a single slot from the user? Yes, uh, that's a great question. And uh, the answer to that question is yes, it is. Um, you know, if you only need like one slot or, you know, like the, the general rule of thumb that I that I give is that you know, Alexa Conversations is great for uh, multi-turn interactions. So for things that are like a one-shot interaction where you you know there's no ifs ands or buts, it's not going to take any uh, you know back and forth. It's just like hey, I want this uh, you know like you know turning on the lights. You don't need to have a conversation about that or you know. Um, uh, what else? Just just any anything um, that um, is just a real quick like you know on demand transactional interaction. You do not need Alexa conversations for, um, but anything that you know has a lot of back and forth, has some ambiguity, um, you know, could be prone to like user indifference or um, uh, indecisiveness. Um, you know, like ordering uh, ordering food. Um, like booking a flight, buying tickets, um, finding a reservation at a restaurant, uh, things where you know there's lots of information that you need from the user. You're not going to demand that they give you all of that information in one breath. Um, you know you're going to have uh, a turn by turn interaction, and you know the user could change their mind partway through, or they might have a separate side question. Uh, Alexa conversations really shines for those types of, of implementations. And so I like to think of, you know, Alexa conversations as another tool in my uh, tool chest and I use it when I need to. And uh, one of the great things that I haven't spoken about yet is that, you know, Alexa conversations is not like, um, you know, you can use it uh, in a skill alongside of an interaction model. And so you can actually, um, uh, delegate from your interaction model to Alexa Conversations, and then you can delegate from Alexa Conversations to your interaction model. So you can use them in the same skill interchangeably. So you don't have to throw everything away. Um, so for example, like say you have a skill like that does like ordering uh, from a, you know, say you have a, a, you know, some sort of store and you can like order food. In fact, we have a skill called the pizza reference skill. So I'll use pizza as the example. 
So let's say before Alexa Conversations, you determined, you know what, uh, building this skill uh, with Alexa Convers uh, um, is, is too challenging. It's too difficult to, to do ordering. So what we're going to do is we're just going to deliver a skill that only allows you to like uh, do uh, an easy order, um, you know, or reorder something that you've ordered in the past. Um, so it's really, really simplified and then check on the status of your order. With Alexa Conversations, then what you can do is if the user asks for um, uh, like that they want to place the order or go through and customize an order, what you can then do is have the skill uh, delegate to Alexa Conversations, have them go through that multi-turn interaction to grab all of the information that they need to, to order the pizza. And then uh, once they're done, um, delegate back to the interaction model and pick up um, where they left off. So you can have Alexa Conversations handle, uh, you know, the situations where it handles things best. So, um, yes. So yeah, I think I think uh, that's a great way to look at it, right? I mean, I think it's uh, it's just as uh, if we had to summarize that it's like a very powerful tool. But uh, with like great power comes great responsibility. So you have to use it pretty responsibly, uh, I guess. So uh, it's, a, it's a great tool per se. And I hope that answered your question, Ashish. And uh, we do have a lot of questions coming in, Justin. But uh, I also know that you have uh, certain things to show us, uh, like uh, building our first Alexa conversation skill. So maybe we'll uh, just go ahead with that. And we will uh, start talking about this in, again in the next 20 minutes or so. So over sure. back to you, Justin. Yes, uh, thanks. Yeah, there's 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 lots to talk about, and I love talking about Alexa conversations. And so, um, you know, I'm happy to be here. And um, yeah, I want to get to to more questions. So um, let me let me pick up the pace a little bit. So um, yes, we have. Um, so the way how you build your model is you have these five build time components. Um, and so I talked about your dialogues earlier. So those dialogues, if you remember, they represent uh, you know, the happy path that takes place to, um, you know, perform that overall task that you're trying. And so, you know, each, uh, so you have a set of dialogues and, um, you know, you have, uh, user turns and Alexa turns. And then, um, you also have these things called utterance sets. So Alexa conversations, you know, when you click that build button goes through your sample dialogues and simulates the conversation, um, and you as a developer don't get to see how it's simulating that and how it's coming up and building out and inflating your model with uh, all the ways that it can deviate. Um, and so, you know, there might be phrases that you absolutely want to add as variations to your happy path. And you can do that with utterance sets. And so this allows you to say, hey, when you build the model, uh, add these particular deviations uh, to, to the model for this happy path. Um, and the benefit of using that is Alexa Conversations will, uh, will go through your utterance sets and do the model inflation on that as well. So it makes your model even better. Um, and so then the other build time component is slots. If you've built Alexa skills before, you should already be familiar with these. Uh, but these are the things that are part of the utterance that you need to capture. Um, and so um, you know, these are backed by a slot type that helps the ASR figure out uh, how to uh, interpret what the user says and uh, store it into a um, variable for you to refer to later. And you associate these with an API definition. And you can think of these API definitions as the tasks that you want to complete on behalf of the user. And like I said before, you can have multiple APIs per uh, conversation um, or I should say per dialogue, um, but typically what you'll have is a required slot or set of required slots. You can also have some optional slots as well. So if the user gives them, uh, it will be provided to the URL, or sorry, to the API. Uh, but if uh, the user doesn't give them, then they will just won't show up. Um, by default, when you create your API, all of your uh, arguments for them are uh, required. And so you can toggle them off if you like. Um, and then, um, so, your API will uh, receive slots and then it will return a slot back. And so Alexa Conversations introduces a new slot type. So you have slots um, before Alexa Conversations, all your slots were value-based. Uh, Alexa Conversations introduces a property-based slot, uh, which allows you to represent uh, complex data structures, which you typically see come back from uh, an API. 
So this allows you to be able to return a set of data uh, to uh, Alexa Conversations. Uh, and then whenever Alexa speaks, um, Alexa Conversations uses responses uh, to do that. And so you define a response template uh, to handle uh, those responses. So um, those are the five build time components. And so when you click build, uh, this these components act as that uh, model training data for the AI to go out and inflate your model with all the different ways that uh, it could deviate from uh, your happy path and then to also figure out at runtime uh, how it's going to uh, build out your skill. And I'm going to jump ahead. I had a couple of other slides that I wanted to show, but I'm looking at the timer and I want to get into actually tearing through uh, the skill here. But um, I'm going to skip ahead here and say, you know, so here's a representation of our uh, conversation that we have. And, um, you know, you know, it starts off by saying the user says, hey, I want a large family dog. So there's two slots that we are going to identify there. Um, and then Alexa Conversations identifies that, oh, hey, they provided the um, the uh, size and temperament slot. And so it comes back and asks, uh, you know, for the energy. So it's going to use a template to do that. Uh, the user says low, then LX Conversations identifies that, oh, hey, that is the um, uh, the energy level. And it comes and asks, um, oh, I just realized I need to fix this slide. Um, that should just say, I want a large dog. So just pretend that set, that says large. <laughs> and then it comes back and says, you know, to prefer a family or a guard dog. Uh, the user comes back and says guard. And then we give them their recommendation. So at that point, it's calling the API. So what does this look like at runtime? So I have this nice little uh, chart here that shows the uh, the two here. So um, you have these different swim lanes. So we've got on the left side, the uh, conversation. In the middle, we have Alexa Conversations, what it's doing. And then on the right column, we have our skill endpoint. So um, what's happening here is when the user speaks, Alexa Conversations takes a look at the slots that it has. Um, and it figures out at runtime which response it needs to use to return a response back to the, the user. And so, um, you know, in this first example, Alexa Conversations determines, oh, hey, I need to request the energy. Then the second uh, turn, Alexa Conversations goes, oh, I now need to request for temperament. Uh, and then once the temperament is given, Alexa Conversation goes, oh, hey, I have all the information I need in order to call the get recommendation API. So then it creates a JSON uh, request, sends it to your skills backend, your skill does what it needs to do, uh, and then sends back uh, the JSON response. And then Alexa Conversations goes, oh, hey, I've got the response now. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, notify success um, response, and I'm going to use that to speak back the response to uh, the user. So that is how Alexa Conversations works. Um, at runtime. So now that we have an understanding of the build time components and we understand what Alexa Conversations is doing at, at, at launch, I'm actually going to do a demo of the pet match skill. So let me exit out of here and I'm going to go to um, the developer console and I'm going to do a demo real quick and then I will you know, show you A, how to activate uh, Alexa Conversations and B, uh, start uh, tearing down the model. So uh, let's go ahead and do this demo here. So I'm going to say open, uh, the name of the skill is pet match. So I'm going to say open pet match. And uh, let me see, I'm going to be capturing my computer's audio here. I've got the volume set about medium. So hopefully this isn't too loud for, for people. I'm going to like adjust the audio on the fly here. So uh, just giving you a warning, uh, if in case you're wearing headphones, I don't want to blow out your eardrums. <laughs> so, um, here we go. I'm going to hit enter. I've been talking for a while. I may have gotten signed Welcome out. Okay, to here we pet go. Match. I can find the best dog for you. What are the two things you're looking for in the dog? Okay. So I'm just going to say I want oops. I want a large dog. I can filter for a family dog or a guard dog. Which do you prefer? Uh, I'm going to say family. And then... Do your friends describe you as high energy or low energy? 
I'm going to say low energy. I'm pretty laid back. I recommend the Great Pyrenees. So that gave us uh, a, res uh, a recommendation. So now I'm going to say um, make that, or how about a small dog? Yeah. How about a small dog? Okay. After changing large to small, I recommend a papillon. So, you know, it now gave me a new recommendation. And so um, not only did it give me a new recommendation, it, um, you know, uh, gave me that context. It told me, okay, after changing large to small, I'm going to recommend a papillon. And then I can say, like, what is that? Description. The papillon Oops. translates to butterfly okay. in They changed into its long something coat with this because ears. the pizza reference this skill also has this the problem. <laughs> um, has in the past, it didn't used to read out this the description thing. Um, These dogs are happy. This uh, software is in beta. Let me uh, friends, mute this so don't talk over it. Um, yes, uh, the product is in beta, and so they are making changes. Uh, this used to not read out description. Uh, we noticed this uh, on stream the other day uh, with the pizza reference skill as well. Um, but um, so you can see though that it's keeping that context. And if I were to say, how about a uh, medium dog? Or, yeah, we went from uh, large to small. So say medium, it's going to rerun the, um, oh, I guess it's gonna re-ask me in this case for, I'm not sure why it filled that context, but I go for low, I can Eskimo, and I can say, what is that? It'll give me the description of this new match. So as you can see, it's, um, you know, doing all of this stuff for me, and I didn't have to keep track of that conversational context myself. Um, so now that we've, you know, shown a demo, I'm going to go do a teardown of how we put and built this all out together. Um, I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger and I'm going to zoom in on the text a little bit just so it's easier for you all to see. Um, okay, so first thing I want to point out is actually um, one thing. Um, I have a couple tabs open here. I've got the build tab. I've got code over in this tab and I've got test over here. Um, one thing that um, you want to be careful of is um, while it's fine to have three or multiple tabs open, um, if you have the build screen open here and you open the build over here and you make changes, those changes won't get synced up and um, you have a possibility of overwriting uh, what you've done and losing some of your, your, your data. So what I would suggest you do is, you know, if you're going to do what I'm doing here with multiple tabs, only use one tab to use uh, to, to edit your model. Otherwise, you'll run into problems where you'll lose lose stuff. So I just want to give that warning. Um, and so um, now I want to talk about how you turn Alex conversations on. So if you go to the interfaces tab uh, and you scroll down, there is this Alex conversations beta section here. Uh, there's this little toggle switch. You turn that on, and then you have the option of making Alexa conversations the default dialogue manager or not. And so if you leave this, if you check this. Uh, when you open up the skill, uh, Alexa Conversations will be the one that, uh, you know, welcomes the user and starts the interaction and uh, is listening uh, and interpreting the speech. If you uncheck this, when you when the user opens your skill, uh, the your interaction model will receive the request. So you'll receive a launch request like you normally do when the skill is uh, invoked. And then um, it's up to you as a developer to um, invoke or, or to delegate to Alexa Conversations. And uh, we do have a sample um, that uh, uh, shows you how to do that. Um, let's see, if we go to the developer documentation. Um, there is a link for, um, which one is it here? Stuff to add Alexa Conversations to an existing skill. And there is delegation handoff, here we go. Uh, if you go to step four, handoff delegation, handoff dialogue management to, uh, to and from Alexa Conversations, uh, it'll show you what you do to um, pass off from the interaction model to Alexa Conversations. Pet Match doesn't use that, but it's a useful to know that you can do this. Um, and the 
um, pizza reference skill does uh, have an example of that. And you can find the code for the pizza reference skill in the cookbook. Uh, if you go to github.com slash Alexa, Alexa dash cookbook, there you go. We've got the link there um, that alexa.design slash AC dash GitHub will take you straight to this page that you're looking at now. And then you can go to the pizza reference skill and look at the index.js file. Um, and if you do a search for amazon.conversations, you can find uh, the piece here where it's delegating off to Alexa Conversations. Again, we didn't do that in PetMatch. Uh, PetMatch is meant to be, you know, uh, Alexa Conversations 101, the entry level, uh, entry level course. Okay, so now that we understand how to turn the interface on, I'm gonna go ahead and walk through uh, the um, sample dialogues here. So we created five different uh, sample dialogues um, and you'll see, let's take a look at the first one here. Um, for the uh, tutorial, we just named this dialogue zero, but uh, in the real world, you'll probably want to name this a little bit more descriptively uh, that indicates like uh, what it is that this task is going to complete. Um, and you'll see here what, um, the way how this is broken out is we have uh, our user saying something and Alexa responding. Um, and, you know, if you've built on the skill before with the interaction model, you'll see, you know, it looks very similar where we've got our slots here identified. So if I click on this, you'll also see uh, a panel that flies out and we can configure what's going on at this step of dialogue. And I'll explain what's going on uh, over here in just a moment. But you'll see if I click on the Alexa um, line of dialogue, an Alexa response configuration panel pops up for each one of these. Um, and then, you know, at the end we have, um, you know, oh, also you'll notice we have these identifier here, and these are called dialogue acts and dialogue acts identify like what that line of dialogue is doing. So, you know, the first one here, when the user says, I want a large family dog, the user's intent is to invoke an API. Uh, then when Alexa responds, Alexa's intent is to request uh, more arguments that it needs for that API. Then when the user is giving an argument to the API, it's informing Alexa of, hey, there's this argument that I have for you. Um, and then when Alexa comes back and gives a response from the API, you can see we have an API success here because it's reporting, hey, I got a result from an API for you. Um, and then you'll notice we have another API success. So this dialog shows um, you know, calling multiple uh, APIs in the same dialog. And so if you remember here, we've got um, uh, the recommendation uh, that comes back. And then here, when we ask how about a medium sized dog, it's switching out the, um, the previous size that they gave and then giving the new recommendation. And one thing to note here is Alexa is not actually going to read this text. Alexa is actually going to read the text that you define in a template that's associated with this. So this sample dialogue is a um, representation of the conversation that's going to take place, um, but it's not going to be read line for line. So if you'll notice here, we have Chihuahua hard coded as the dog, even though, um, you know, we asked for a large dog, Chihuahuas aren't large. Um, but what's going to happen is at runtime, Alexa Conversations is going to use the data that came back from the API call and the template, and it's going to combine that um, and render it out into the actual response that reflects the data that you passed to it. Um, so let's take a look at line by line now what we're doing here. So um, the user, um, we have uh, some slots that we've identified that we want to collect. So we have uh, large, which is size, and we have family, which is temperament. And again, we're trying to invoke an API here. So the dialogue act is going to be the, invoke the API. Then we have an utterance set, and the utterance set is, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the way how you manually specify the way how the conversation can deviate um, via you know, some uh, unexpected inputs or not really unexpected, but um, other ways that you can say this. So like you can see here, if I click on this pencil icon, um, we can edit the utterance set here. So we put in originally, I want a large family dog. And you can see here, we say, I want a, or I, you know, in this case, we just flipped the, the um, the order that they came in. Um, but you could also say, I would like, we want, um, you know, again, this is a, a simple sample. Um, so like we would want to add some more variations here. Um, and you can see here, we have our slots, we've got a size and um, 
you can see that uh, we mapped the size to a slot type that we created. Um, and so um, that is the first line of dialogue. Also, you'll notice here, uh, we can map these slots to variables. And so we have size, and then that's mapped to size zero, and temperament, that's mapped to temperament zero. So what is this doing? This is how Alexa Conversations tracks the conversational context, these variables. So um, if I skip ahead to this API success call, uh, you'll see here there's an API that we need to invoke. And if I click on this arrow to expand it out, you'll see that we're mapping variables to arguments. So we're passing size zero, temperament zero, and energy zero. And you'll notice we're mapping that to size, temperament, and energy. So the values that were collected above, size zero, temperament zero, and here, energy zero, get passed to the get recommendation API. And um, this is how we're able to pass that information over. And so um, because of this, you know, we're getting that context carryover because when we say, you know, how about a large dog uh, and the skill um, uh, swaps that out without adding these extra two lines here, it'll just replace the value size zero with uh, the new value that you give it and call your API again. Um, so you literally have to write no extra code or anything to, to you know, uh, as far as your skills backend is concerned, it just receives another request and returns a response back. Um, so in order for us to add the ability to come back and say, oh, so after changing out, um, you know, what you asked for before with the new value, this is the new recommendation, we just added these two lines here. And so you can see what we're doing is we're capturing a size into a new variable called size one. And then when we call the get recommendation API in the second uh, go at it, instead of passing size zero to the argument, we pass size one. And then we keep the other uh, arguments the same. And then what happens is we get a return and I'll talk about return in just a moment. Um, but you'll notice we have a response template here and we pass it size zero, size one, and the return. And so that allows us in our template to say, oh, so after changing your old size for your new size, which old size is mapped to zero, size zero, new size is mapped to size one, um, you know, we can then read out what our new recommendation result is. And so I'm gonna show you what the recommendation result is. Um, so the recommendation result is this new type of slot that I was talking about before, which is a property-based slot. So instead of having a, a, a set of values that backs it, it has a set of properties that backs it. And so you can see here, it's built up of four properties. And these properties represent the uh, data that comes back from uh, our uh, skill. So um, you can see we have the temperament, we have the energy, we have the size, that was the information that was passed to us. And then this name is the name of the dog breed that the skill recommends. So that is um, how we uh, return that recommendation. Um, so if I go back to this dialog, you'll see um, when we call the API, you'll see that um, it returns this get recommendation result. And then we have this response here. And this is our, we, we called it notify uh, success get recommendation because it's notifying the fact that we had an API success call and it's passing the uh, get recommendation uh, result to the response. Whereas in this case, uh, being the one where we've got the um, one where we're going to um, give them that context, it's taking in three variables um, as arguments. So uh, same API, as you can see, get recommendation and get recommendation, but the response template is different. So um, yes, Karthik, you have some more questions? Yes, uh, we've, we've got a lot of questions, but uh, uh, thanks for bringing those questions in, folks. And uh, we won't be able to get to all of them, but uh, yes, uh, do join the Slack channel and uh, the Alexa Conversation Slack channel, and most of these answers should be answered. A question should be answered there. But one of the conversations that's that's happening in the uh, in the discussions in the chat is uh, that uh, Ashish mentioned that he would really love to know uh, how. Alexa conversations is being implemented in games. And uh, yeah. when you look at uh, at a first look, right, uh, Alexa conversation seems mostly geared towards uh, utility use cases, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and Drew had a fantastic example of like the escape the room kind yeah. of conversation, right? Where where it could be, uh, you know, where they could follow a single path, 
Uh, but players don't always follow a single path in most of these examples, right? Right. So, uh, what what's your thought on that, uh, Justin? How is how can Alexa conversations be implemented with games per se? Yes. So, you know, um, that's a really great uh, question, and I think Alexa conversations is great for for games. And um, you know, this is a, a perfect use case in uh, for uh, what I like to refer to as a hybrid skill. Um, where you have Alexa conversations and an interaction model working together. So, you know, for a game, typically you need to have some uh, management of state outside of the turn-by-turn uh, -turn conversation. So, like, because one of the ways that Alexa, what Alexa conversation is doing for you is it's keeping track of the conversational context. But once the goal has been completed or you've exited the skill, uh, that conversational context is forgotten. And so uh, it starts fresh every time you restart that skill. But when you play a game, like you want to save that um, that information, right? You need like, you know, you've got your level progress that you've made. And so um, what, what you can do with a hybrid skill is you can have your interaction model keep track of all of that game state. And especially if you have like ISP, um, you know, in scale purchasing like levels and, and items and stuff that the, the user has bought, you would want to keep track of that using persistent attributes. And when this uh, skill starts up, uh, you can check all of that stuff with your interaction model. And then when the user, uh, you know, enters one of those levels, um, you know, you can then delegate to Alexa conversations, have them go through um, and interact and change their mind and do all of those different things. And then once they've completed that task, you know, the, the, the task that they're trying to complete in a game, so to speak, would be to complete the level. So there's, you know, an API that you're going to call at the end with a set of um, arguments that's going to say, hey, you've completed the level. Now uh, we're going to delegate back to the interaction model and, you know, maybe unlock the next level for them to be able to choose. Um, and so, um, you know, it, it would work like Drew, I didn't read in the chat, but um, you, you mentioned he talked about um, the uh, example with an escape the room game. Um, you could also do something similar with a casino where you've got like, you know, uh, different um, uh, games that you could play like uh, roulette or poker or anything like that. And so, um, you know, in the lobby, so to speak, you could be like, you know, here are right. your options. They choose something. It goes to the to the game. They could go through and try to choose, you know, what their bet is. You could have some code that's going, uh, some APIs that uh, uh, validate the bet that they make and be like, oh, you can't make that bet in this case, or you can't make that exactly. move. And so, less conversations would really help with um, optimizing that. Right, and 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 uh, that brings me to the next question. And uh, with any hybrid kind of a skill, it, and uh, for any of these skills to be built, context uh, is kind of like the biggest uh point here right and uh yes. so one of the questions that came into the chat was if we could feed some context-based information to alexa conversations dialogue manager for some of the slots uh yes. beforehand and how does alexa conversations generally help with context management yes uh, that's a that's a great question and yes you can uh uh, provide context to Alexa conversations. Um, so on my screen here, I brought up the documentation for uh, how to delegate, uh, ha how to hand off uh, dialogue management to Alexa conversations. And what you do is when you send the updated request, um, you specify an utterance set name and you can specify a set of slots. So that's how you specify that context. And so um, if we go to the user interface here, you'll notice that we have for one of these um, utterance sets here, we have a name. So this is the, uh, we call this one invoke, get recommendation, size, uh, temperament. And the reason why we called it that was because it was a way for us to uh, remember that, oh, okay, this is the example where the user gave us the size and the temperament. So because we're able to call an utterance set, we're able to say, hey, Alexa Conversations, uh, go to this um, uh, line of, of dialogue and um, take this information as the slots that the user provided. So it's it's just as if the user said it, um, but we're telling it programmatically to to go to that step. And when Alexa conversations, as I said earlier, like the way how these dialogues are, like this dialogue is for you uh, for, to to understand what's going on here. But actually, what happens once the um, 
model has been built out is Alexa Conversations at runtime dynamically figures out uh, what uh, response to uh, return uh, based upon that context. And so uh, that allows you to be able to say, hey, you know what, skip all past here and start out like at this because we've given it the utterance set and we've already filled these these slots. So yes, you can definitely give it that context. And, and can the context of the slot, uh, slots be managed with persistence? Um, yes, so, um, you know, you can, and, and, and so, yes, so, in, and you can, it's up to you to choose where you want to save that information. So if you're, if you're using Alexa conversations and you get a request uh, in your backend code, you can use the persistent attributes manager to save that information into, uh, you know, DynamoDB or S3 or however you're where you want to save that information, or you can do it from uh, your interaction model and save it there. And then, you know, you could load up that information and, um, Carry over. One of the things in the pizza reference skill um, is there is an in progress. Um, uh, my uh, computer is uh, pinwheeling here. Uh, in let's see, underscore, what was it? Progress. Um, so there's an in progress uh, such an attribute here. So that way, like right. if if in there if in they're in the middle of like ordering a pizza and they go, hmm, actually, you know what? Um, Let's have an offline discussion. Maybe like there's a family ordering together and they're arguing about like the toppings that they want to put on it. They can quit the skill um, and have a discussion, come back and reopen the skill. And it uses the in progress, um, you know, session attribute to then restore the order. So there's an example of that in the pizza reference skill. Got it. And uh, just one last question before I let you continue is uh, someone had a question on how can I send data to APL in Alexa conversations? Uh, followed by a, uh, a lot of lot of people. Uh, so Ashish also mentioned that dialogue management, right, uh, doesn't mm -hmm. support APL directives. Uh, if Alexa conversation does uh, support yes. APL directives, is a question that uh, we had in the chat. Yes, great question. And so that was actually one of the, the things I was about to cover next because I was going to talk about uh, the uh, templates and responses. So yes, Alexa conversations does support uh, APL. And if we go, oops, not in the utterance set, if we go into the responses, um, if we edit any of one of these, you'll see here that uh, we have an audio response and audio responses use APL for audio. So that's awesome. Uh, and then we have a visual response. And so this is for an APL document for a device with a screen. So we right. can actually go through here, create a new visual response and have um, uh, an APL document render on uh, devices with screens. Right, uh, so that sounds cool. So I think uh, I'll just give it back to you now and uh, maybe uh, we can spend some, we, we are just running a bit over time so you can just speak for 10, a few minutes more, 10 minutes more, uh, yes. and then maybe we can bring Drew in. Sure, yes, yeah, I don't wanna take too much more time and I've gone over mo most of the basics um, and uh, I would also just say, uh, I'll go over the, the response templates in, in, and then we'll wrap it up there. But um, what I would highly recommend that you do is go through uh, the um, uh, this link here with all of our uh, on-demand um, content that we've uh, got here for, because we've we've done a lot of, of live streams and we've done a lot of um, you know um, presentations on how Alexa Conversations works. And so there's a ton of great information in all of these videos here within our office hours, within the walkthrough. Um, uh, Sam, who couldn't be here today, he and I collaborated on building the Alexa Conversations uh, to, uh, Pet Match tutorial. And so he and I actually walked through step-by-step -step all six modules. Um, and then uh, this past week, uh, Nathan and I went through the pizza reference skill. So, um, you know, you can think of the pet match as Alexa Conversations 101 and the pizza ordering skill as Alexa Conversations 300. So, you know, it takes your knowledge, stretches it and takes you to the next level. Um, so I would highly recommend that you take a look at these videos um, and also check out this under the hood video because you get access to uh, some engineers at Amazon and get to hear their knowledge about, uh, you know, Alexa Conversations and how they built it. So. Um, now I want to talk about um, our uh, responses here. And so let's take a look at um, 
uh, how this works. So actually, I'm going to take a look at the welcome response because this is really cool. So uh, this is using APLA, which is Alexa presentation language for audio. And you'll notice here um, we have this audio response, which is just our welcome, our welcome. And we have a set of them here. So we've got several. We've got welcome to pet match. I can find the best dog for you. What are the two things you're looking for in a dog? Then we have another one here that just says, what size of dog are you looking for? And then we have another one that says, what temperament, right? So at runtime, uh, Alexa Conversations is going to randomly choose one of these. And in fact, it's not Alexa Conversations that chooses this. It's the APL uh, for audio that chooses this. And if I click on Edit Audio Response, it's going to open up in a new tab the um, APLA editor. And so you can see here, we have an APLA uh, document. And what's cool about this is if you've done anything for uh, Alexa presentation language, you're pretty, you should be familiar with that it's a component-based, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's component-based. And so you can like uh, mix and match components, you can nest them, and the same rules apply here in uh, the audio version. And you'll notice we have an item that has a type, this is a selector, and the strategy is a random item. So what it's going to do is it's going to randomly select one of these items from this list here. And what's cool is we've got this play button. So I can click play and it will randomly uh, choose one of these and uh, play the audio. So I'm going to go ahead and press play a couple times and we'll see that it should uh, randomly choose one of these three things. So I'm going to hit play. Welcome to Pet Match. I can find the best dog for you. What are the two things you're looking for in the dog? So it, this time it asks the first one in the list. Let's hit it again. Let's see if it. Welcome to Pet Match. I can find the best dog for you. What temperament are you looking for in so the dog? So you notice this time it, it shows the third one in, in, the, in the template here. So this is really cool because it allows you to be able to, um, you know, uh, have a randomized welcome message without having to write any backend code. Uh, previously, in order to do this, you'd have to have an array of, of items and then have a random number generator that would choose um, an index for you. And then uh, you would have your code return, uh, you know, the value from the array at that randomly chosen index. So, um, you know, APLA, which is built into Lex Conversations, makes that easier for you. And you can do some really complex things like gluing stuff together because you can nest these. You can have a random selector. Um, that then has, you know, some other things built into it um, to, to compose a really complex um, APL for audio. You can also mix uh, background uh, sound effects and music with speech, um, which is something that you couldn't do before. Um, and then one other thing I want to point or show is that uh, if I take a look at this here, this is how you specify uh, the slot values um, for Alexa to say um, so you can see here, it looks very similar to uh, how we uh, add slots to um, an utterance. So here we have, okay, after changing old size to new size, I recommend um, a, and then recommendation result dot name. So that's that um, property based slot. And we just access the value from it by doing dot and then the property name. And if I edit this in the APLA editor, you can see this one, um, you know, we have a random item. This one only uh, has one item in it. So it's only gonna choose the first one, but if we added other variations, we could do that. But you'll notice we have, okay, after changing payload.old size to payload.new size, I recommend A, and then payload.recommendation.result.name. So you can see that is how we're able to simulate that. And what's really cool is we've got this data um, thing here that we can set. And I can actually go through here and do old size, um, large, new size, small, and then what is it? Recommendation result. And then we'll just put in <laughs> Chihuahua. All right. And now if I click play, it should, um, assuming that I formatted this correctly, um, it should just replace those values and read it um, as if the data came back from our API. Okay. 
After changing large to small, I recommend in Chihuahua. So that's really cool. You can go through and, and uh, make your changes. You can iterate on this. And um, it, this also supports uh, SSML. So you can um, you know, enter an SSML. You can change the pitch. Uh, all of that stuff that you're familiar with, with building Alexa uh, skills without Alexa conversations, uh, work in this context as well. So that's really cool. Um, so, oops. Yes, I want to leave that page. Okay. So yeah, that's that's uh, you know your audio responses, and then you can combine them uh, with your visual responses as well. Um, so if we were to create a new visual response, we can say, all right, this is um, I'm just going to say notify success. And then uh, call this the context carrier get recommendation context carryover, and then um, you know APL or visual whatever I want to um, use as the um, identifier, and now then that'll open up over here in the APL editor, and then I can create. Uh, an APL doc and display that uh, whenever a user has a device with a screen. So um, I know there's lots to, to cover. We're only just beginning to scratch the surface, but I've gone through out this um, uh, skill and we've talked about all the different components. Um, I'll, I'm going to wrap on this. We've got um, the sample dialogues here. Each one of these dialogues, you'll notice this one, um, we have two API successes. This one, um, we give them the recommendation, and then we have them say, what is that? And here we invoke the get description API and return uh, what that description is. Um, so that is uh, our, um, our different dialogues. And then these other ones here go through um, different variations where they asked for um, you know, a temperament, and they, they start by asking for a temperament and an energy level. This one here does all three in one shot. Uh, and then we have another sample here where it's it's turn by turn. So each, they only give one slot per. Um, so those are the different um, scenarios that we scripted out. Uh, and then at runtime or at build time, Alex Conversations goes through these, creates all of the um, deviations that could, could uh, it could think of using also our um, utterance sets. And then from there, um, you know, at runtime, figures out how to respond. Um, and I didn't go through the code much, um, but the way how, uh, as I was talking about earlier, is you have um, a, you know, this, if you're familiar with the Node.js SDK, um, we're using that in this case as well. And instead of looking for an intent request, we're just looking for dialog.api.invoked. And then the request includes an API uh, request. And so you just look to see what the name of the API request is. So this is get description. So this is going to return a result when you got the uh, get description. And then uh, our code just goes through, gets the arguments from the API. Um, and then it's going to uh, build a key to look up that information from the database. And then we just return JSON um, that uh, maps the description to the description that we got from our database. And we just return, uh, we're using this build API function, which is just this, where we just return an API response with our description. Um, and that's it. And so um, that is uh, you know, what you do on your backend. So your backend code is uh, much more simplified and it's much more focused. It's focused more so on you know, uh, getting in an input and returning an output than it is on keeping track of state via state machines and, and other things. You could you can still you know save stuff to persistent attributes if you need to or like in your situation, but um, you know it, it really cuts down on the amount of code that you need to provide yourself. So um, yeah, so I think um, you know that's all that I wanted to cover today. Um, I think we can turn over to Q&A. Okay. 
Thank you so much, uh, Justin. For our next segment, I'd like to invite uh, Karthik Raghupati, Solutions Architect, Amazon, to moderate the panel discussion with Senior Solution uh, Architect, Justin Jeffries, and Drew Mayer, Head of Product Marketing for AI, Robotics, and Space Products, joining us from Amazon Alexa team. Over to you. Uh, thanks. Uh, wow, that, that was a lot of questions. and. Uh, I think uh, when I looked at the page there, Justin, I just noticed how many office hours we have. I think something uh, something like Alexa conversation does require like a lot of uh, you know uh, office hours. Uh, so yeah, uh, hey Drew, welcome to the stream. Hey guys, glad to be here. My fingers are fire on fire from all that typing, all those great questions. <laughs> yeah, same here. So so glad you could join us. And uh, so uh, I did have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask you. And uh, this one is more of like a personal question. Like I've been, I've been working in voice since 2017, right? And one of the things that we see uh, specifically with uh, voice in general, right? People try to, uh, developers who try to come into the ecosystem, they try to really push the barrier of voice and try to do uh, something really cool with Alexa in general, right? I've, I've seen that in a lot of, lot of use cases. Uh, and you have been now, in uh, working on Alexa conversations for a while. You have been talking to developers who have been building uh, Alexa conversation skills. So my first question to you, uh, both of you, maybe Drew, you can go first is, what are the ideas that you have seen where participants are really pushing the barrier of voice and Alexa conversations in general? And that kind of made you think like, hey, we didn't actually build it for this, but this looks like a cool idea as well where uh, you know Alexa conversations could fit in. Man, so it's still pretty early days, I would say. We launched this product into beta. Uh, well, we first announced the product more than a year ago and it, at our reInvent, uh, our reMars activity in Las Vegas. And it was an enormous amount of excitement and buzz around the whole idea of applying AI to allow Alexa to do a bunch of the heavy, heavy lifting hard work for the developer community. So we had it in preview. And then, of course, the world was struck by this this terrible pandemic, we had some products that we had built in association with some partners that would allow you to plan a night out. So you could say, I want to go see a movie. I want to get some dinner. I want to go on a date and have some ice cream. And I want to hire a babysitting service. And by the way, I want to add a, a ride sharing service. And, and Alexa would just take care of all that for you and link the different skills together and, and manage the entire conversation. That was pretty exciting. We ran the demos for that and we had that thing published. And then, of course, nobody was leaving their homes anymore. So we had to pull back a little bit and retrench. And then our beta has now come out. So we kept making progress. And it was challenging and difficult. The tech in the back end is, is extremely complex. Uh, as you can imagine, I'll just go on a little aside here. We, we had a, a stream earlier this week with some of our engineering teams. And they talk about how this is actually done. But the part that I like the most is how Alexa, when you build the model, will duplicate a conversation between two agents and create 10,000 plus different versions of that conversation while the model is being built in the background for you. Like these are things that are happening on a scale that are just impossible for a typical developer to ever accomplish. So we're trying to change the game here. But I tell you that story because what's happening is the developer technology is making it possible to do stuff you never could do before. And we're not sure yet what this is gonna lead to. Uh, we're excited uh, particularly about the food ordering use case where if you've tried this or experiment with it with some of the skills that are published today very linear stru structured scripted dialogues that go from a to b to c to d they work great and alexa knows okay i have accomplished this and now i need to do this and then i'm expecting this type of input and the developer can actually map that path out but that's not how people talk it's only good for certain use cases so something like ordering a pizza or a burger or a mixing a drink or doing something where you pick from a lot of different variables and blending them all together and doing it in a way that feels like a human being, super challenging for a computer that thinks in linear fashion and Alexa Conversations is now bridging that gap. Uh, so that's a really long answer to your question, Karthik, but the, you know, it's really exciting to see the direction we're going where Alexa can behave more like a person. Got it. And Justin, you want to add to that? Yeah. Um, you know, I've uh, in supporting the hackathon, um, people in the Slack channel have been DMing me some of their ideas. And so I don't want to disclose uh, some of the ideas that I've heard just because they're, you know, 
uh, working on stuff for the hackathon, and I don't want to, I, I don't want to share their ideas, um, you know, until you know the the deadline for the hackathon has 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 uh, passed. But um, uh, I, I'm in. What I'm personally looking forward to is seeing how people augment their existing skills with Alexa conversations. Um, a lot of uh, you know, you know, Drew was talking about you know the. Uh, how it, the AI is giving that assist of simulating the dialogue and giving you 10,000 uh, different um, variations adding to your skill, that is a lot um, that it's doing for you on your behalf that, you know, you as a person would have a lot of, it would take a lot of time to build out 10,000 different variations uh, into your model. Um, and so a lot of uh, developers will end up scaling back uh, on their skills because it's like, well, you know, I could do that, but what's the return on my investment? What what am I going to get out of that? Is it really going to help move the needle? So with Alexa conversations, you know, you can actually, you know, um, you get that AI assist. So, you know, it's a little bit, it's a lot lower bar uh, barrier for, uh, to entry to get uh, the, um, to get that uh, benefit. So, uh, there's a little bit more investment that you have to make up front to learn all the different uh, uh, concepts. But once you understand that and you've built out all the building blocks that you need for your skill, um, then it's much easier to add more functionality to it. So um, what I'm really looking forward to seeing is uh, how developers you know, take it and add new features to their skills that they either thought impossible or scaled back due to the constraints of the technology at the time. That's that's an uh, interesting point to look at it, Justin. And uh, so I think uh, when the uh, when the hackathon was initially uh, uh, announced, uh, we've we've seen a huge amount of interest uh, from Indian developers in general, right? And uh, one of the things that usually happens when we have hackathons here back in India, I mean, uh, we don't. I mean, we do have online hackathons now. But when we used to have offline hackathons, we I used to be there in person, and we we would give them um, certain tips and tricks on uh, how they could kind of improve their skill or just general uh, feedback. Uh, if you can give, uh, maybe I'm just giving you a number three, but uh, happy to get more tips. But uh, what are the top three tips that you can give for developers who are participating in the hackathon, so that say for example they can win the hackathon that's a question that i've i've kind of just i keep getting uh, on the slack channel uh, that we have for alexa indian developers uh, what are the top three tips that you would have Drew? let me go first Justin, and then you can give us some of the stuff you've seen on the tech side um join the slack channel i'd say is tip number one because we're doing the best we can but we have real jobs and we're doing this during the the, the different time zones so for the folks in india to get the fastest response and the best, the most accurate information, the most people who know about this are actually peers of yours that are sitting there doing the work uh, in the Slack channel. And so from the from the fastest response time and best depth of information, I would start there. Now that's tip number one. Now, number two would be, uh, uh, man, I don't know. Uh, Come to the events, go see people doing this live coding and describing what's going on so that you can kind of get your head around the changes that are happening in the background and how you should think about programmatically addressing them in your skill. Um, you don't need to be an expert in how the AI works, but it really helps to understand sort of the assumptions that we've made and how things are going to happen in the background based on the inputs that you provide. And so the um, the one particular stream I'd recommend is the, the Between Two Devs with uh, Jeff Blankenberg, one of our chief evangelists, and two of our engineers who worked in the background. And that's all available for streaming online from the from the site, the link we put in earlier. I'll put it in here in just a moment. And the third thing is the pizza reference skill. Like This is the best living example of how Alexa Conversations acts and behaves in the wild. And you can start from that, and then you can start tweaking it, and some of the hard work is already done and you'll get a little bit of a jump start on the direction you want to go. There's three. I got I came up with three. Uh, Justin, you're up, buddy. Yeah, and you know to to you know reiterate that point that Drew made about joining the Slack channel. Uh, you know, the 
community as you know everyone's learning together uh, about Alexa conversations, myself included. Like you know, I've been I've been uh, I've had early access to Alexa conversations, and my knowledge is still expanding and learning and, and growing as as we go on and as people ask me uh, challenging questions. It's like hmm, I need to go find an answer to that. So. Uh, you know, the Slack group is also improving my knowledge of of the technology. So, um, and as I've seen over time, as more and more people get more and more knowledgeable about Alex uh, conversations, people in the community are starting to answer questions. So the other day, like I was, uh, I saw someone ask a question, I was in the middle of a meeting, I couldn't get to it. And then as I got out of the meeting, and I was about to go answer the question, I saw that somebody in the community had already provided an answer. And I was like, this is awesome. Like the community is starting to help each other. Um, so yes, um, I would definitely double down on what Drew's saying about joining uh, the community. Um, as far as you know, other things that you should do to uh, you know with the hackathon, I would recommend that you you know start uh, building and uh, like uh, submit your skill to the uh, certification as early as possible. Uh, I said this earlier, but um, you know, it, it takes time to get your skill certified. It's very rare that you get your skill certified, uh, you know, immediately after you submit it. Usually, it takes a little back, a back and forth, like, um, and so I would suggest um, submitting it sooner rather than later. You'll beat the rush of everyone trying to submit their skill uh, for uh, certification. Uh, because, you know, like I said, there is an automated process, but there is also a manual part of the review. And so uh, the volume of submissions does greatly affect the, um, the amount of time that it takes for them to get to your uh, skill through certification. So you'll want to submit as early and as often as possible. So what I would suggest doing is like create some milestones like, OK, this is my minimum viable product. This is what I want to, to show and then have some stretch goals along the way. And so submit your skill for, for certification when you've hit that first milestone with the impressive thing. It might not be the most impressive thing that you are that you want to achieve, but it's pretty impressive. And then you submit that, get that certified, and then keep working uh, on um, building out and stretching the skill. So that way, um, you know, it, it, at least you have something to submit to the to the hackathon. Um, I've, I've spoken with people in the community that uh, just barely missed a deadline in the past, and it it um, it, it um, made them sad because they weren't able to get it in, and they they took a break from building for a while, then they reset and came back, and so it's like yeah, to avoid that that letdown, uh, you know, get your skill in early, um, and, uh, and, and I would say have fun. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think you know this. This reminds me of that Calvin and Hobbes trip where uh, Calvin just gets this inspiration when the deadline is super close. Uh, so I think uh, that's that's a, a good feed, uh, good tips in there. So to summarize, uh, for uh, folks viewing us, uh, join the Slack channel and uh, join the other events that where Justin and team, everyone will be streaming and talking about Alexa conversations in general. And do look at the PISA reference skill. Uh, do notice that Alexa conversations is still in beta. So you are a very unique set of sub, uh, subset of developers who are uh, working on this. And uh, I know uh, Alexa conversations is not available in India, but uh, for Indian developers who are watching this, when you start building on it, like Justin mentioned at the start of the stream, when it comes to India, um, and uh, while we cannot speak about the roadmap, you would be the first ones who would have already have knowledge about it. So that's that's a really great stuff to be in. And uh, really want to emphasize on what Justin mentioned that there's just 15 days remaining, 15 to 16 days remaining roughly for Indian developers. Uh, so if you have not submitted your skill, beat the rush, uh, submit it right now. And uh, not right now, but uh, submit it at a right milestone and make sure that you are beating the rush in general. Uh, I think with that, we are almost out of time. So uh, Drew and Justin, thank you so much for taking out time and joining us here today. I'm pretty sure the Indian community uh, really, really uh, loved the session and uh, really appreciate you waking up early in the morning, your time. Uh, Justin from Tokyo, I guess, and Drew from an <laughs> ISS capsule in California. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, uh, over to you, Divya Shri. Thank you, team, for all the tips and answers. 
well i'm sure all the attendees have uh, submitted their names and details in the form because it is time to pick a lucky winner i'd like to invite sunit to announce the winner over to you sunit hi everyone so let's see the winners now alexa launch community winners welcome to alexa community india would you like to pick today's winner for giveaway yes here is the winner sarthak vijayvir gaya so that's it then we are back to you thank you sunil well with that we've reached the end of this session for today and it sure has been really interesting i thank our entire team of alexa community india and all the participants for making this conference a successful one thank you attendees for showing the kind of enthusiasm you have and joining us today thank you so much everybody stay safe